Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, you oh, guys are you guys are in green together. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's an absolutely inevitable thing. You notice that you I told I told Pernilla yesterday it was like you girls cycle together when they live together. <laughs> they start having a period at the same time. We color <laughs> coordinate <laughs> together. <laughs> It's so funny, like like I said, it's not something we're planning on. It no. just happens, <laughs> and we see ourselves on camera going like, like "Oh, oh. <laughs> so we're we're in the green mood today." We are. We are. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm it's okay. I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> what is alive right now? Uh -huh. <laughs> what is alive right now? Right, that's a good question. We've we've decided we decided not to ask people how are you doing anymore because it's so loaded and so wrong and a lot of people don't know how to answer. So we're gonna ask you what is alive right now? What's alive? That's that's not gonna you... be exhausting at all. No, not at all. <laughs> well, uh, Vince goes, How are you rolling? How are you rolling? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hi, Jahira. Uh... Hi, Jana. Hi, Lila. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, oh, Don't start yawning. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to bring up. <laughs> Single hand. You've got, you got that power bit. Can we see? Can we see? Yeah. <laughs> That's meditation of the day. It is. Yeah. Yoga, yoga Nidra. <laughs> yoga Nidra. <laughs> Of power nap. <laughs> power nap. Can we see your boot? Point the computer oh, at your boot. I, I want to. I'm not wearing it. It is. It is what? the worst thing ever. I, I I am doing so much better not wearing the boot. So the boot is on the other side of the room, uninhabited. That's uh, good. Yeah. It, it like it, it hurts so bad every time I put it on, and it gets more swollen. And it's like I see no point. I, it clearly seems to be doing something wrong. So I've been yesterday. I wore a sneaker for the first time. And like I'm, two weeks, two weeks with a broken foot, and he's almost yeah I'm, walking. I'm, I'm walking, walking around the it. house with no support, just kind of like walking on the heel and the sort of the in uh, sole and uh, the in inside of the, of the sole. And uh, yeah, it's you know I'm, I'm very careful, but it, it's cool. much much better cool. than I'm expecting. But the boot is is not <laughs> not a help. I always thought the boot was just to gather sympathy. <laughs> it really doesn't, uh, it really doesn't do anything in general it just reminds you not to be an idiot and go to the gym and stuff like that completely yeah well we have been gym. We, we have but but you know did did it intelligently in a way yeah. it didn't hurt it so yeah. yeah it was okay do you have one of those cool scooters that you can put your knee on it <laughs> me. Story about me. That. I, I i'm in the process um, by the time I get it, I don't think I'm going to need it. It's It's been literally two weeks of waiting to get like insurance approval and doctor's notes and all the stuff that's necessary for it. So um, I'm that's still, how I'm, it works. Yeah, they, they're, they deliberately delay you. They well, they do, because actually they the like every time I've talked to them and every time I ask, you know, how long it's going to be, they say, well, what most people do is they'll just pay for it out of pocket to rent it for yes. two weeks for $150 or something like that. And then you can get it from the insurance, you know, afterwards. But like we looked them up on Amazon and it's less than that just to buy one outright on Amazon than it costs to actually rent one. To rent it from them. Yeah, so I just can't see it. And because scam. I'm- it's, so scam. it's, yeah, I think that's, that's my conspiracy thought. <laughs> but I'm pretty, pretty sure that's the way it works. <laughs> no, but you're actually doing really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm really very much surprised and grateful that yeah. it's been. Uh, but you you also quickly. been working with with the psychosomatic part of it, mm -hmm. you know about, you know you you saying that I need a break, I need a break, I need a break, and then you got a break. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and really I have put that into practice. Yeah, it's been, I've really changed uh, the habits and everything. Like okay, yeah, I I saw I saw the the issue that was going on, yeah. and now I'm. Uh, and then and then it's like then it's like the body doesn't need to have yeah the broken that, foot yeah the broken foot because you are meeting the needs yeah. yeah so so far so good 
It looks like we're going to be a little group today, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, we talked about that instead of doing a meditation to to start with, we would like to talk a bit about um, awakening and what is standing in your way of awakening. And you can either make yourself comfortable and close your eyes, or you can have eyes open. It's completely up to you. Sit and look at something comfortable like, out the window or or just w something where you feel relaxed or you can close your eyes um, and make a deep breath and exhale and feel how you land in your body and become present and aware and that you're for every exhalation you do you fall into gravity and you feel very present here in your body right now. And that is a given when you do deep exhalations. And the more you do that in your everyday life, the more you get used to that that is what happens. That when you do three or four deep exhalations, then you're present and aware right now, right here. That's a very easy exercise to get out of the mind and into your body and present and aware here. And while you sit here, I would like for you to bring to mind the parts about yourself that you do not like, the parts about yourself that you feel ashamed about or feel guilty about, feel that is not exactly like you're supposed to be. And if only this was not like that, then everything would be good. It might even be that you very clearly see that this part of me is what is in the way for my awakening. If I didn't have a racy mind, let's say, then it would be much easier for me to meditate or if I didn't have all the obligations in my life, I could really devote myself to the practice and meditations and watch videos on YouTube and be much more diligent with it. If only I didn't scroll or flick, but went to Discord or engaged in the community, watched all the videos, did the curriculum again, then I would become awake. So think of all the things in you that, that you feel is clearly a flow. And when you hear other people talk about their awakening stories, about how they experience awakening and how their life is now, how suddenly everything was just easy and six feathers has fallen and eight feathers has fallen and they can say exactly which feather has fallen and where they are and you just get confused by all the feathers and can't really find head and tail in any of it and not sure where you are and one day you are in one feather, another day or another feather, and it's more confusing than it's helpful. So you feel like they get something that you just don't get. They, they do something right that you just don't do. And if you just could figure that out, then you might have a chance to become awake as well. I would like for you to really feel into that. That feeling of inadequacy, that sense of comparing that you do with yourself and others. And just allow that to be in the body. I know it's very uncomfortable, but just for now, allow it to be there. And then I would like for you to really notice 
what is wrong with all that? What is wrong with thinking like that, comparing yourself, belittling yourself, feeling inadequate? What is wrong with that? You might think, but my life would be so much better without it. Are you sure about that? Are you sure that resisting what is, is the way forward? What if you could allow all this to be here right now? And just notice how much of that is actually just thoughts. Thoughts about your inadequacy. Thoughts about shame and guilt. Thoughts about comparing. How much of all that it's just thoughts. And can there be anything wrong with a thought? If a thought is not real, it's just a thought, and you do not have to believe in a thought. Is there anything wrong with these thoughts? If you, instead of believing in the thoughts, and fighting the thoughts, just recognize that it's just thoughts. And what is left? If all of those thoughts are just thoughts and allowed to be just thoughts, what is left? might be a sensory experience of a contraction in the body. Can you be in a body with a contraction? Might be a sensory experience of slight nausea and clammy hands. If you do not attach a thought that starts to explain why you are slightly nauseated and why you have clammy hands and just let go of all the thoughts and just sit with the sensory experience. Can you be in a body that feels like your body feels right now? Without adding any story to it. And all you do is just allowing what is right now to be as it is. If you no longer identify with your thoughts and you allow a thought to arise and disappear without believing in it, without emphasizing it, and what is left? What happens to a thought when you don't think it? It's not there because it was never there. So what is left? You're right here, right now. There's nothing about you that should be any different than what is right now. How can it be? You are exactly like you're supposed to be. There's nothing wrong with you. You cannot be inadequate. Because this moment doesn't need anything. You do not need to be any different. There's nothing about you that should be removed or changed or added. If you think so, that is just a thought. And what happens to that thought when you don't think it? Can 
And in this moment, where you are exactly like you're supposed to be. And this moment is exactly like it's supposed to be. There's nothing that is missing. Nothing needs to be any different. How can awakening be anything but this? How do you know that this is not awakening? If there's no thoughts that are comparing anyone to you or anything else, if you do not have any thoughts about you needing to be any different than what is right now, how do you know that this is not awakening? I like for you to make a deep breath in and open your eyes. And we would like just to talk a bit about this because it's one of the things that that is the most um, painful, I can say, when we hear people believing that that they are not there. Other people are, but they are not. The only thing you need to become aware of is that that is a thought. That is a thought. And we can look into 10 different ways that we identify and think that we need to be different either via thoughts or via feeling or emotions, that we believe that, that we can be in any different way, that there's a parallel where we can, things are better or things are, they are not like, like they are, they are better. It's just 10 different ways of identifying. It's just 10 different ways of noticing, becoming aware. Oh, wow, right now I believe in a thought that is about that. Now I believe in a thought that's about that. So it's just noticing those 10 different ways that we believe in thoughts, believe in what is happening, instead of just letting the thought be as they are, not trying to change it in any way. Don't fight with the thoughts. Why would you? It's just a thought. And that even extends to thoughts about I am awake. I am at this certain part. This is... This is it. I'm done. I've I've become enlightened now. You know, yeah. I've had some great experience. And then you try to hold on to that experience. But every experience is just a fleeting moment. And it doesn't define who you are in this moment going forward or or the next moment. Exactly. And any idea that you have, even about having a certain attainment and being awake at a certain level is still another form of identification that's in one of those realms of, of thought identification. And can only be a thought. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> there will be posted a meditation tomorrow that goes along with this talk that we just had right now that Todd has made. Um, it was actually an extract. I, I had a one-to-one -one session uh, with somebody, and um, it was basically an hour-long inquiry. And so I took about I don't know, 20 minutes or so of that and um, extracted it and anonymized it. And, um, and it's coming up on Todd's channel tomorrow. And if what we just talked about was potent for you, then I can recommend you to to listen to that to that inquiry meditation that he has that goes along with it it's really important for you to just remind yourself that you are not supposed to be any different than what is 
right now. Awakening is not coming and going. It's here all along. It's just about noticing how much of your thoughts that is diverting your attention from what actually is present right now. And that is awakening. So it's not magical or mystical or it can be for some people. It's usually fleeting. And then they feel, but it felt amazing. It felt amazing and now it's gone. That is not possible. It's just different. It's an experience that has changed. And an awakening is not an event. It's something that is present here all along, all the time. So yeah, any questions? <laughs> yes, Phoebe. Let me just in. Uh, there we go. Here we go. Um, oh, one second. Hey, Phoebe. Okay, uh, that's a weird. Yeah. Oh, why? Let me just find out why that is. Sorry. My... We have a strange display what? moment. Huh. Well, I mean, you can. I don't know why the display is that. Is that is that working? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a. Oh, look at that! Well, that's kind of cool, actually. It's we have a, we have a different display then. Yeah, like. instead of like a side by side, we have an up and down, and then we have like a whole gallery view on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know why. There we go. Hello. Hi. Hello. So, um. I sent Todd an email last week and he responded and it was, I ended up transcribing the whole email into my journal and I just the act of transcribing it just shifted this thing in me. And it was like, like, my, like the issue just expanded like the universe. It was like, whoa. And the, and the next day I woke up, it was like um, a force. I was a force of nature. I mean, I couldn't believe it. This and I, nothing I did that day was doing on my part. It was just, I want to, I want to respond over here. And I ended up cleaning out a part of my attic that has been 10 years in the coming. I mean, and creating beauty and, and it was just organic it was like oh i need to i need to dust all the surfaces in the living room today and clean and and then with my creativity with my artwork doing it and saying it's done but is it perfect no but it's done it's done it's okay and it's the first time i, I delivered a job this week and um, I, I was fine with it not being perfect. I was fine with them loving it or not loving it. And it, it just was so huge. It was just such a huge shift. And then that during that was going on, I was saying to myself, ooh, this is like that woman that Pernille said, about walking five miles, hiking five miles and exhausting herself, this energy that comes up. But I was like, yeah, well, too bad because I got <laughs> so much done. I mean, I am just on, this is like unbelievable. But then I'm washing my kitchen floor at 10 o'clock that night. And then I couldn't fall asleep. I was awake the whole night listening to meditations, you know, all this stuff. And the next day I said to myself, well, I guess you didn't need sleep last night because here you are. And I had a full day that day driving 200 miles, 500, I mean, five meetings that I had to do and I did them and it was so beautiful just what, watching it all and not attaching to any story about it. It's like, yep, yeah, well, here we are. And I'm so grateful for that. Beautiful. 
But part of that, what happened in that process, which is what I wanted to bring up right now is I was with my mom in the nursing home and she is, she'll be 99 wow. in Congrats. July. Yeah. And, and, um, and, and she's still continent. I mean, how, how cool is that? That's you know, so I'm fucking believable. But anyway, the loneliness in that nursing home, these people, and my heart, it really breaks my heart that I can't, I can't, how can I hold these people in love? These, and, and I'm not talking about the 200 residents. I'm talking about six of them. But those six distract me from my mom who really needs me, who wants me. But these other people, and, and this is what I wanted to ask you about. It's a boundary issue. And can I hold them in love? Can I leave? Like today I was thinking, well, why don't you just write Joe Green a note and leave it for him and tell him that you think about him and you care about him. He's a young man. He's got to be in his late 40s or 50s. And he's in this, he's in a nursing home on Medicaid for life. That's his fucking life now. And he's lucid. Mm -hmm. And, but when I did a kindness for him a couple of months ago, the next time he saw me, he said, hello, gorgeous. And I was like, that's it. That's it. That's my boundary. You, you do not sexualize me. Do not fantasize about me. Do not that like, and I just, I was like, that doesn't work. That's not working. So I, but I see him and he's just in such pain. He's in such, and it's isolation. It's lack of connection. That's the pain. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah. How can I love these people? And still, and have boundaries, and have boundaries. And I am really like this is, yeah. Their loneliness just, you know, Pernille, I hear you say, "Can you be in a body where you feel this loneliness?" And it's like, oh my god, it's so painful that loneliness. Okay, so that's the answer. Can I be in a body where I feel such loneliness? Yeah, well, the, the multiple answers. Yeah, Do you yeah. want to go first? Yeah, sure. Well, I was going to say, first of all, it's it's useful to look into, is it really their loneliness that you're feeling? Mm -hmm. Or is it yours? In the projection of being in that space. And I know what you're talking about. I've been in nursing homes and I've had that kind of feeling in there. Um, but it's it's still relevant to know how much of it is the projection that you're putting on the situation. You know, I'm not discounting how they feel at all. Um, yeah. yeah. How much of it is coming from, you know, we have really empathetic responses with people and have so much love and compassion for them without sharing the pain in that way that actually makes us less effective. Because mm -hmm. what you're experiencing now is so much love that comes from such a, a pure place. And also this feeling of loneliness that you, uh, you know, are assuming that they feel, which again, very possible, but maybe not, or maybe not in the same way as you're feeling it. But yeah. if that pain is keeping you from being effective, then that's not useful to them or you, or anybody else. Right, right. Right. And that, that part's familiar. Yeah. That, that is, oh, I've tried doing this before. And that's what held me back 
yesterday I was like oh you're you're there's something not clean here yeah. and it's going to end up with not feeling good and they're not going to feel good and you're not going to feel good so okay so, All so right. you can do some work looking into your own feelings of what if you were in that situation and feel the loneliness that you feel in your projected version of that situation or just bring them to mind and feel what comes up with that that feeling of loneliness and then working with that getting in contact with that feeling the the um you know giving yourself the love the compassion all of those things that that you might need to feel okay in that sort of a situation um and see what what arises through that um as opposed to making it you know have anything to do with about them at this point keep keep it yeah, okay. kind of in here for the investigation mm. you... yeah yeah it's it's like that 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 whatever empathy we feel for others is our it's it's us ourselves yeah we we feel ourselves when we are when we have that empathic feeling of others when we can feel other people's pain it's our own pain that we feel okay all right it's, the thing I would like to talk about is about Joe and boundaries and that sexualization that, that yeah. you're about. because it's the same thing. Um, it's, it's your sexualization of you. It's not his sexualization of you. Oh, okay. All right. If, if you have clear boundaries and he goes like, hello, gorgeous. He could be talking about your soul. yeah so, yeah yeah so so yeah. when you hear that he's talking about that that he's sexualizing you it's you that is hearing that which is just good right. to acknowledge because you can just say my name is phoebe i really would like if you call me phoebe instead of calling me gorgeous and then that's it very very clear boundary so whenever somebody you know wolf now it's he doesn't do that but like wolf whistle or something like that it's very easy just instead of getting all in a hissy fit just teaching them boundaries they clearly don't know boundaries i know my boundaries so i can just go like please don't do that you know yeah yeah and i don't like when you do that at yeah. by my name and and yeah. that's it and it's it's, it's not it's not anymore there, there's no need to go into a hissy fit or anything like that if we have clear boundaries, it's just like, just like you teach a, teach a toddler not to pick their nose in public. It's just like, no, we don't do that. We do that in private. You know, it's, you don't need to go into a history fit about it if you have clear boundaries. Yeah. So the reason yeah. why you felt that, that you didn't know where to place it is just because you need to become clear about your sexuality, your sexual boundaries and, and where you stand in you. That's got nothing to do with Joe. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. It might be one of those situations where, you know, the I'm definitely not doing the defensive male, you know, talking <laughs> male myself, but, but there are some guys that don't realize that yeah. it's not like, like to them, they don't mean anything sexual about it. It's just like, the way they it, dress it, women yeah it's just like like so, but it, it's it's what i mean it, that it's, it's like an, teaching it's a, it's a teaching a toddler moment. exactly it's a teachable Te moment teaching a toddler to, to be like we we don't we don't do that in 2024 yeah, exactly. we do not wolf, wolf whistle and we don't call women gorgeous unless yeah. they have given consent yeah so it's just a teachable yeah. moment yeah yeah you know i really love this so i've been sharing the two of you with a lot of people i know Thank you. And, uh, and I, I said, what I, what I really value is Pernille's teaching me how to nurture myself and reparent myself and love myself with language. I just don't know. It's not in my repertoire. Yeah. I never heard it. Yeah. Um, so, and hearing you, you, you say, um, that's not my name. My name's Phoebe. Yeah. You know, I it, like just learning that language. It's like, oh my God, yeah. this is like, this is a whole nother way of relating to life. 
And just as an aside, I want to say to Anna, Anna, I love listening to the po. I love listening to your posts. I love your dynamic with Pernille. And um, it's, I love this community. This is just really gold. So thank you. Thank you both. Thank you so thank much. You. I feel exactly the same by the community. I absolutely love it. And 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 I I do think it's really important that also as a way for us women to heal through history and heal our you know our own family history you know in reverse. It is these things that we talk openly about it. How do we manage when somebody is calling us gorgeous or darling and we don't feel comfortable with it? It is important to talk about you know and it is i'm really happy you're bringing it up thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Um, let's see if we can can get this somehow i don't know I, I, uh, let, let me just go back yeah. to gallery there okay. we go and then we do a, a more pen and then we do a and then we do an anarchy. It's still and that's, it. it changed nothing. I think you guys did something because it's happening on mine as well. Is it really? Yeah. So weird. I don't no, know. I, I, it doesn't normally happen. On <laughs> how about do you do you um I don't know how to here, do this? Oh, let me escape. No. Oh, there, there we go. There we okay. go. So you don't use it. it? No, okay, we do it like that. Oh, do, 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 do. yay, sorted. Clever you. Thank you. There we go. Hello, Anna. Hello. Good to see you. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say um the talk you had today, that's in you know, introduction talk, that's actually what has been, you know, have been establishing here mm. in the very recent days. I really just, you know, like noticing thoughts are just thoughts. I just saw it, and that's it. And uh, an awakening is this right moment right now. <laughs> it's just sensory experience and thoughts, and that's it. Yeah. It's simplicity beyond simplicity. <laughs> yeah. yeah and it can be dual experience, non-dual experience, self and no self, and anything. Anything appears in this moment. This is awakening exactly as it is. There's no step in out of it it's impossible to do to step out of what is happening yeah. so yeah it's just like but still you know like that self and mechanism and all, all the thought patterns you know that old running way still coming up sometimes and taking that attention but yeah it's very very interesting to notice it just seems like more emotional stuff getting processed like calmer mind becomes and more this like establishing into this presence or whatever that is is happening and uh, another thing I wanted to mention last time when we talked um I shared that the that anger outburst happened yeah when I just you know like something said something to my son mm -hmm. so um there was, you know, like a uh, process that stuff looked what, you know, is there. And uh, it was very interesting to see what was behind. There was a lot of uh, like protective anger. Mm. I just like, and you know, like anything just you touch, any sensations, it's just like anger, anger, anger. And that's like, like rage, you know, like really just like, feeling disgust and like you know I could see that like it wasn't just my mom but it was like a female person standing away facing back towards me and you know like me as a child and uh, and it was just like you know just the desire to just like shred her <laughs> and then you know like there's like a lot bodily expressions came up you know like a shaking and different kind of things and crying and eventually it got to that core what is behind anger and there it was just like a big cry came out I just want my mommy I just want my mommy I just want my mommy and that you know like that's like strong feeling of 
isolation, like aloneness, abandonment, separation, that type of thing. This it's hard to put them what you feel into words, but yeah, that's what was like. And you know, when I was like sitting with them sensations, uh, I just felt like that anger is like cocooning that core of what because when they got you know that was just like in Tommy and there and there different different kind of ways and then just getting into that core and that core really just felt like here just completely here and then was an outburst you know like just really like helplessness and just like complete despair and just like you know you just breaking down you just feel so so fragile i just like a wee touch and you just crumble into pieces that's how it feels and then you know like got in touch here and that started to change colors it was just like red and change into orange and change into yellow and sun is shining and things like that it's just such an interesting experience but yeah so basically that's all what i wanted to say there is not many questions but that's what it was. I, 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 yeah. I just want to say, yeah, thank you, and very, and also thank you for for following it. Yeah. You know, instead of fighting against it, then just seeing what is what is happening when I'm not limiting anger to be anger, but allowing whatever is arising to be something else detached from thought, but just allowing whatever is arising to arise and not creating something out of nothing, but just allowing what is to be. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. There was, and then um, it was Tuesday and then a few days later, I was on Vince meeting because something was really just coming up. And it seemed to be like it's related to work issue. <laughs> but um, so, you know, like it's just like something is coming up and that's like maturing, like bubbling, bubbling, bubbling until that is ready to come up on the surface. And I woke up that Saturday morning and I could hear them, you know, like beliefs, like whispers, very, very quiet. It's more like sensations, actually, not like a thought. They thought, but they are more like you send them instead of hearing so i kind of like tuned in and to start listening to them and there was like like two opponent parts you know like fighting one 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 wanted like authentically to express itself and speak up and do that another protective side was like no you don't have enough strength just go and merge with wall so you're not invisible no one sees you no one hears you and things like that but anyway and uh, I was talking to Vince and he said, you know, like this and that and that and that. So it eventually went to um, being afraid. If I speak up, then they will say something and I will burst in crying, you know, feeling hurt and crying. And I will not be able to stand up for myself. And what happens then? And then you just start laughing at you. And that is... Um, like humiliation and then Vince asked me what humiliation feels like and that was like it's just like you've been destroyed you, you're completely just completely destroyed and he said if he says that from first person perspective like I don't exist and I was just like even hearing him saying that I just really brought up something and it was such a strong strong release I was shaking like for nearly an hour. <laughs> so yeah, like that week was like, and something's bubbling up again here. Something start to come up, but it's just like getting maturing. <laughs> the the only warning I want to have is just notice how much is thought, because you can very easily go into into thought experiences that feel like it's it's the body but it can only happen with a thought because the center experience is like I say, seven to 11 seconds and then it's sorted. If it continues, then it's because very, very subtly there's a thought attached or there's an identification attached, like a little appendix that you're not even aware of. So just be, be very alert that you're not being, you know, pulled around, you know, in a game show by thought without mm -hmm. noticing. Normally, normally, like recently, 
what I have noticed. Um, they don't like they last a wee bit longer than that, but um, they kind of come and whatever happens, <laughs> move and change and doing something, and then just like goes. Mm. But uh, yeah, a very interesting. I really like that, you know, like sensing into all this and very, very interesting. It is, it is, it really is. So, yeah. So, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, no. You're going to be my friend. Yeah. What's this one? Uh, yeah. And it's done. Let's get done. Hello. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. Hello. Hey, Ben. Not too bad. Thank you. I'll turn the volume up a bit or something. Sorry, I haven't been here in a long time. It just turns out that way. I don't know why it turns out that way. Like I haven't been ignoring you. You know, I've just been doing stuff. I don't know. I, have, I haven't felt ignored, so it's fine. Totally That's happy. brilliant. I'm glad. Um, cool. I was a bit late. I was on a phone call and it kind of knocked me off balance a bit. I wasn't here on time. Anyway. Um, I was going to, can I ask you about something? It's probably something I asked you about before, but um, just because it was happening today and see if we can help a little. I don't know. I'm working on it anyway. So, sure. um, but yeah, so I was just doing, doing self inquiry kind of. No, well, yeah, I guess I'm trying to look at looking at thoughts. I, this idea of the next Angelo's, he's not his personal thing, I guess, but he often, you know, what's the next thought? And um, I struggle with that. You know, I, so many flipping thoughts here, it seems to me. But, um, but, yeah, so I was I was this morning for an hour. I was watching the next thought, the next thought, and like a huge number of them in all directions, some random. Or I just I was watching. I was so I was like, wow, at least I'm managing to stick with it for an hour. You know, that was pretty huge achievement. Not achieving, not believing in them yet, but sort of you know getting there a little bit. I think, wow, this is cool. I can do like an hour, and a, like a year and a half later, I'm just getting to step one of watching the next thought. You know, and I thought, wow, this is great. And I so I came back at lunchtime and the similar the same thing as usually happens kind of happened, which was that it just feels like I'm confused and there's a huge there's just this yeah, confusion and this blankness and this spinning feeling and this feeling of I'm doing this wrong. And that's so certainly true that I can't shake that. And I just feel like I'm not and there's a belief that there's thoughts happening here. It feels like I'm believing thoughts and I can't see them and I don't know what I'm doing and I oh, just feel lost in it. And various other thoughts come up. I know I asked you about this before, but this is my experience for so long. Um, Various thoughts come up, but the ones in the center feel like, oh, what's happening here? I bet you I'm believing something. And I felt into it then instead of looking at thoughts, I felt and I found like, you know, this kind of core of my identity is the one who fails at doing things. I'm currently failing at doing self-inquiry. And, um, and that feeling was so strong. And I just, yeah. So I was working with that, like, as a part, as it were. And I'll help get people to help me with that. And I've done that before. But just, I guess, yeah, just like, I, I think it I, I think that it should be easy to just go, here's a sensation in my head. I have labeled this failure or something. I am failing. I've labeled this. Can I just take the label off that and stop believing that it's me failing at self-inquiry? Can I just do that? It's not, not easy, but I can't. I feel like I'm failing at self-inquiry and I'm confused and I can't escape from that. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a couple. I have a couple. I, have, I also have a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the first thing I would like to, to point out is, is what is it you assume that inquiry is that you are not doing, that you're clearly failing on? Because it must be something else but what you're doing. Otherwise, you can't be failing. If whatever you're doing is inquiry, it's just the done way of doing inquiry, then you're not failing. It's, it's, a, it, thought, it's yeah. a thought that is telling you that you're doing something wrong. I'm curious about that. How do you know that that what you're doing is wrong? I don't think it's got any rhyme or reason to it. I think it's so used to telling me that it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's going to tell me that anyway. Yeah. It's just going to keep telling me and telling me. And I'm I'm kind of half know that I kind of think it's just telling me because it's used to telling me that, and I'm still believing it. Yeah. Um, and I, it, oh, yeah. So, so if if we just assume that 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 whatever thought you have is just a metaphor for something that needs to be experienced, which means that there's a metaphor right now that your that is a thought is reminding you 
that there's something that you have experienced in your life that is manifested into your body that Don is doing things wrong. Mm. That that is the feeling in your body that we need to look into. And that is what I would go with. So instead of fighting doing something wrong, do an inquiry into into how does that actually feel in your body? And that is your territory. You're amazing at that. Okay. Um, okay. So 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 go with that and see where it takes you. Be curious to what is it that actually needs to be felt. What what is it that you right now are avoiding feeling by keep having a thought about feeling wrong and doing things wrong is wrong. Okay. So, cool. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Because I did start feeling it a bit, and I don't. I I got a certain distance myself, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, go on. What what do you feel? Well, I felt yeah. So I felt I just felt the sensation of it, and I felt, and I was I was doing a focusing thing. I was said hello to it, and 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 um. I didn't even expect it to start telling me very much. I just said hello. And then it suddenly started to tell me about my whole secondary school since the age of 12, that everyone told me I was wrong for about 10 or 12 years straight. Yeah. And I was just bombarded with people saying, I'm lazy, I'm good for nothing. I'm not studying hard enough. I'm wrong. And I was listening to this for 10 or 12 years going, oh, no. And this part has just got so confused by being told he's wrong yeah. for the whole of for, for 10 for a decade. And, and that's as far as I got with it so far. And that and that might actually be what you need to feel into. Yeah. To to that that contract that contraction that happened in your body for ten years straight, that mm. contraction is still there. Mm. It, yeah, I, was, I don't know what to do next though. I was but... just gonna ask, how does it feel exactly? That there there's a feeling in the body that's associated with all of those times that you were told this about you know who you thought you were. And then that was actually the first one of the questions I was going to ask was, um, we have an idea that when you have a thought about I'm I'm doing this wrong, I'm not doing this well enough. If just those words were there, it wouldn't really have any hooks to it. It wouldn't mean anything. It's because there's an associated feeling. There's something in the body that arises with those words that makes it feel substantial and true. Mm. So the question is, what does it feel like to be doing something wrong as you were asking? And is that the same sort of feeling as what you're talking about now, that, that contraction of the childhood memory feeling? I don't. What does it feel like to do something wrong? Is it or how does it feel like yeah, something well, is happening here? You're putting your hand when, when I do that a lot more. I do that a lot recently. I don't know why. The last few weeks yeah, I've been. Yeah. Before. So 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 what yeah. what what is happening here in your chest right now? Um. Best I could say as I'm being with myself, or I'm trying to comfort myself, or something. Um, something like that. What are the sensations though in there? Do you do you feel oh, yeah, okay. the sensations that are in here? In here, not, funny enough, not a huge amount right here. That's what I find it from my head, my face, and all the way down to my you know torso and my stomach. I'd, there's a whole piece of this whole doing being wrong thing, um, and it feels like confusion in my head, and it feels like embarrassment in my face, and sadness, and and then some kind of uh contraction of my torso and down into anxiety and a bit of my stomach sort of but yeah. there are not just sensations but still anyway yeah so so i was gonna say if you can it's good to have the awareness that this kind of feels like embarrassment this kind of feels like anxiety this kind of feels like sadness but if you can take the labels set them aside and just be the pure expression and the sensations exactly as they're showing up and it's not just looking at the sensations from a distance for a, for a moment, when you feel it, see if you can so fully become one with those sensations. Like that becomes all that there is while they're there. Mm -hmm. You might find that they don't persist that long if you do them that way. But it's just being in absolute communion with those sensations without any of the ideas that this is sadness, this is embarrassment, this is anxiety. Um yeah pure experience of sensation okay sensations i'm not sure if i'm doing it's almost like what i was trying to do i will follow i'm not going to go off on a tangent or anything but sort of probably but um what i was kind of doing this morning i think i was i almost had to separate myself from it because i felt like me yeah. i am feeling it didn't feel like a part of me i had to negotiate or just talk 
too. I was I felt like 100 percent I am failing at this all the way through. So yeah. to become more one with that while I already feel I'm that I don't know how to even do that. The physicality of the sensation, because right now, if you have the idea that I am failing at this, there are so many thoughts happening. There's mm. a failure thought. And then there's probably some other subsequent thoughts about why you're not doing it correctly, why you're not as good as other people who can do it correctly, how this is just one more in the long line of history of, of all the times. All of those things are probably there. And it's not the actual raw sensation. It's like if you had a pain in your leg, that pain doesn't mean anything. It's just raw sensation that you could, if you wanted to, get so close to that there's effectively no division between a viewer or an experiencer of those sensations and the sensations themselves. So and we can do the exact same thing with the sensations that we call sadness, embarrassment, anxiety, failure, all of that stuff. We're really talking about the just the physical sensations. Like what does embarrassment feel for you, feel like for you? Is it warm mm -hmm. in the face? So just feel the warmth that feeling of warmth. If anxiety feels like a churning, bubbling in the stomach, just feel the churning, bubbling. If there's tension and contraction, you just feel the buzzing, tensing mm -hmm. sensation. And it's just as raw as you can possibly get with physical sensation. And it's becoming absolutely synonymous with that. And just stay with it as um because I'm trying to do it as you're talking, but I'm getting a bit blanked um by you know but some parts. A, sometimes but. sometimes it also helps going the other way. So you you start in the book because when you for those ten years where you were told that there's something wrong with you, every time somebody told you or gave you an indication or like something like yeah. that something happened physically in your body just like when we're when we're used to being hit as children we flinch we have certain muscles that are flinching those muscles mm. give us tension in the neck and throughout mm. the next decades we go around acting as if we're flinching mm. so when when you were told over and over and over and over that that you're wrong and you're not doing it good enough and and you're doing everything wrong and you will never become anything good you you started to get a certain physical demeanor that that made you be in a certain way so if you sit upright right now if you pull mm. your seat back your bum back in the seat and you're sitting upright everybody can do this and you sit upright and then mm. you take your shoulders forward mm. and up mm. and roll them back mm. and relax in your shoulders and then you imagine that there's a helium balloon here pulling you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you start to inhale on a smile. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. The demeanor that you have physically now is not the same as if you are flinching or if you are being told that, that you're doing something wrong. So sometimes it comes from the way of the thought into the body. Other times it comes from the body into the thought. Mm. And that was what Todd was, was pointing at, that there is, that mm. sometimes those are so connected that when we have that, you know, that demeanor about doing something wrong and we, you mm. know, contract ourselves like that, the body is giving us the signal that I'm doing things wrong. It's not the mind that is doing it. It's coming from the other way around. And that's why sometimes it helps, you know, to shake it up and change the demeanor, inhale on a smile. So you sit here and go like, okay, what exactly am I doing wrong? And you can't find anything because it's not in the body anymore. Okay. Yeah. I'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I can't feel it as strongly now because I'm talking to you, I guess, but I can continue looking at it as I, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's funny when I set up straight, you mentioned the helium balloon. As soon as I set up straight, a bunch of anxiety came over me going, how dare you set up straight and try to be confident? That's not, You're not allowed to do that. There you go. Yeah. Mm. There you go. And that thought might actually be more uncomfortable than the thought about you doing something wrong. 
So it's better yeah, to yeah. think that you're doing something wrong and that you're playing it small and you're at yeah. least not arrogant. Yeah. And believing mm. that you're puffed up and you're arrogant, that's much, much worse. And that's why you're not mm. going down, going in that room. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So I, but, I would recommend you to work with both because they're probably connected. Probably are uh, connected. So just the feeling, can I just continue for a second? So when if when I if I can get to the feeling of the sensations piece and I feel sensations, then I'm just what do I do? What do I do then? Um just continue to feel them as closely as I can and just not try and change anything or I don't know. Um yeah. Effectively, yes. Uh, the the sensations like what I was pointing with is if you can really be with those raw sensations just as they are without adding more fuel to the fire with more thought about what mm -hmm. you think they are, they will change as Pernilla always says, you know, within seconds. And what you might find is that actually they change from something that feels anxious or or sad or whatever into something like contentment or happiness or the actual experience of them can change when you don't have the label on them it's like um you know if you if there's a uh this is not a great example uh <laughs> I, I was gonna say if there's like like uh a, say like a like a song that you for some reason feel like you've always hated and it's like you don't really like the song but if you put it on and completely hear it like you know what this time I'm going to listen to it completely fresh. I'm bringing as little, you know, going to really history try to have no it, history, yeah. no thought about it. And just hear the exact sound, like the real sounds of every instrument, the real sound of the voice without putting any of your own stuff on it. You might find that actually it's either neutral or, you know, okay, I guess I kind of like this, you know, like you might have a very different experience of it if you don't bring the preconceived notions to it and we're doing exactly the same thing with the sensations mm -hmm. and you're it it sounds really simple uh because it feels like we need to do 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 something mm -hmm. but in some cases the only doing that we need to do is just to get out of the way and just allow the sensations that are there to be experienced exactly as they are and they, it's completely taken care of on its yeah. own yeah seventh feather something out of nothing yeah 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 that sounds easy. I just I'll quickly well, I, you see that's why I say I'll quickly say something because I'm afraid to take up too much time. Yeah. But um <laughs> sorry about that. Um something good to but, look um, you know, that that concern about taking up too much time. Yeah. That's that's also something really good to investigate. Why why um, um how, how oh, I, I want to be small, remember? Um oh, exactly. Yeah, because I'm wrong. Um but uh take yeah. up, take up physical <laughs> space, take up time. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. No, I was even while you were describing a minute or two ago, and um, because I had heard you Pernil, saying something about this, either a feeling or a sensation or whatever feeling can only last for seven to eleven seconds, and I'm like I'm going, gosh, that mine lasts way longer. I'm clearly thinking about them as I go along. Yeah. Um, and uh, even now while we were doing this exercise, I was doing everything you told me as best I could, and telling myself I was doing it wrong while I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. And, um just going how well, do i separate? multitasking <laughs> oh yeah i normally can't do multitasking except when it comes to meditation i can be distracted and watch my breath at the same time <laughs> yeah great so i don't know how to stop you know then i say oh you can't stop your thoughts because you're not creating your thoughts but i don't know but i just yeah so that was happening now while i was watching that sensation but, and but, i'm telling myself i'm doing it wrong and yeah, yeah but but there's a you can't stop your thought because you're not in control of your thoughts. You cannot stop smelling or tasting or seeing. You cannot stop any of it because it's not it's not within your wheelhouse. It's not it's not under your control in any way. You do not have to believe in it though. Yeah. Believing in it is a completely different ballgame. It's like, you know, a cloud is coming and you start a little argument about a cloud is coming. It makes yeah. no sense. Mm. But, no, yeah, no, yeah. That is what we're doing. So you have the thought about you taking up space and you being arrogant and you are always wrong and all of that. That can happen without it meaning anything. It's just a thought. It can, yeah. It's just, I guess, what we were talking about. It's like when the thing feels like it's true, it's hard for me not to believe it. And that's here we are with the feeling of being wrong. And I'm having the thought I'm wrong. 
and it feels true because that's what I feel. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wait, I can't stop believing it. And um, because it feels true, and that's what I've been trying to do. That's what we started talking about, I guess. But I keep, exactly. yeah, exactly, because that is that is exactly what point what, what Todd is pointing at so often that just because we have a sensory experience that is correlated with the thought, then it must be true. Yeah. But it's not though. The the sensation in the body is not you being wrong. It's just a sensation in the body. Yeah. That sensation in the body can only get a certain um, direction if you give it a direction. Contraction in the chest is just contraction in, in the chest. But you, mm. you say this particular contraction in the chest is because I am wrong. Mm. It's the thought that is adding to you. You're giving a value to a contraction that is not there. And that yeah. thought that is added, that is the something out of nothing. It's just a contraction in the chest. There's nothing more. Yeah, yeah. I know. So I know we went through it already. I'm just saying, I was repeating myself, but like, I feel like that's what I've been trying to do, but not doing it very well. So like, I, I have that theory in my head going, okay, here's the sensation. I have a label of I'm failing on this sensation. I'm trying to separate those and I'm not achieving that. I still but, feels like, you know, but, blah, blah. And how do you know that you're not, that you're not successful? I mean, we have, you have done leaps and bounds since we started talking about this. It's yeah. just you're comparing with something else. Maybe. Yeah. You 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 think that what you're doing and what you are, what you the insights that you're having are not happening quick enough. It should be happening quicker. It should have been resorted by now. You know, I've been doing this for a while. It should be sorted. That is just another thought that you're adding to something that is not real in the first place. Um yeah, I don't know how fast it's supposed to be. It just feels pretty damn slow to me you know yeah. confusing but, but and upsetting. But it can only feel slow if you're comparing to something that is quicker well that's true if, i don't know how to compare it if to that's you're comparing, true. if you're comparing to something that's slower like never ever going to change then you are sprinting yeah i know so on one hand yeah exactly the thought is just it doesn't have any interest in evidence it's just keeping repeating the same thing so yeah yeah that's true yeah 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 so okay. how, how do you know? How do you know that that you are not good at this, that you're not succeeding, that you're not? How do you know? I guess my well, I say my well, the evidence I would say is that it seems that I continue to believe the same stuff for months and months and months. And I'm like, what have I this is the same old stupid thing I've been looking at, you know, and I'm still looking at it going i know this doesn't mean x but it still feels like x what the hell am i going to do now so, yeah. so instead of fighting it can you allowing it to be there without believing in it can 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 what is can that contraction that is happening in your body be allowed to be there can can you be in a body where that contraction is happening and you do not create more out of it but just allowing it to be there if this is done 10 years old that needs to feel how this body feels with that contraction not being good enough can you be the adult in the room and just allow that to happen going like it's fine i'm right here it's fine yeah in theory in practice not really but i'll try to do it again after talking to you now but in practice no i mean i'd say in practice up to this point no is the answer mm -hmm. i can't do it without believing it because i've tried for ages yeah. and it just keeps being believed but I'll keep trying, you know, I, yeah. Um, how, does the, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, go, yeah. how does the belief manifest though? So you, you have sensation and you have a thought, but, but when a thought is there, when you say that every time you experience it, it's believed, what's the difference between the experiencing of, of, of a thought and the believing of the thought? I mean, it's, it seems so circular. It's like a thought seems to trigger a feeling and then the feeling says it's true, and then I that means I believe it. I'm like, that's really simple. I mean, it's stupid. I should just go, I can see through that immediately, and yet it still feels true. Well, well okay, so, so the first of all, I would like to say, though, I mean, you are on a really good trajectory with even recognizing, first mm -hmm. of all, like in the past, there was no space between the idea of I am failure at this assault. well yeah. well well no that that well yes but but back in, in the idea back in the day you just took it at face value that there really was something wrong with you that you really were just not good at doing things 
now you're putting some space in between there and you're recognizing that, okay, these are thoughts. They're not actually true, but they feel true. But that already is such a step from where you used to be. So now you're recognizing it. Now it's a step of wondering or finding out what is the difference between experiencing a thought and believing that thought. And so, like you just said, you have a thought and then you feel it. So there's an assumption that feeling something in the body means that you believe the thought, but does it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, in, rationally, I would say, no, of course not sort of thing. And yet my ex the experience of it is like I'm believing it. And I'm going, what is this believing in it? feeling thing that I'm experiencing why is it yeah I, I do keep asking myself like why do I feel like I'm believing this what's what is in this that makes it seem like believing it's just a sensation and a label what am I doing why does it feel like I'm convinced that I believe this and I can't unconvince myself it's weird is, is it because it sparks in a sort of emotional tone that feels familiar yeah yeah, yeah, I say, and it's very, as I said before, it's very central to my identity as the failure since since school. I mean, it's so, yeah. So can you uh, feel that emotional like tone that it brings up, that thing that kind of feels like the the sad or you know, sort of hangdog feeling of of what you associate with the feeling of Don, that it's that feeling that's there, and then really get into is that itself the thing that you think it is like is that a a a whole unquestionable uh indivisible kind of a, of an emotional tone or can you feel okay even in that feeling of being this sort of ambiguous sense of uh, that where is that felt in your experience is there something in the neck the head the chest like even that break it down to what it feels like to have that emotional tone present because it's okay. still all identifiable and you can still take the label even if you're not giving it a label consciously all the time for a moment think of it as oh right i recognize that that's the sad don feeling or that's the whatever and then just do what we've been doing and come to the breaking it apart into all the components of that experience all of the scent, felt sense experiences that are the components of what it feels like to have that more vague emotional tone and just be with those as is without saying that that means anything more than just a pain in a leg. Okay. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep trying to like watch this back to remind us of what you said. Yeah. I remember asking you, I think that I asked you this something like this back in December or January, and I forgot most of what you said immediately. So I had to watch it back <laughs> several times. Um, but yeah. It's, it's why we have meet meetings once a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and I also I I had just just a practice question. Um, because I just want to clarify that ironically, that you are doing everything correctly when you're doing that. Um when, <laughs> when you mentioned the 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 practice of you know, what is the next thought? what is the actual like practice that you're doing when you do that waiting for the next thought practice i don't know is there more to be said about it than just what you described what do i i'm I, maybe i misunderstand what i'm i'm waiting for i don't know i'm waiting for the next thought what am i i don't know what what i don't know are you are you anticipating a thought are you um be... i'm trying to see if i can see the next thought i Okay, well, I say, I'm trying to see if I can see the next thought because my normal experience has been the one I described of confusion, whereas sometimes, well, not very often, sometimes this morning I was going, oh, hold on, I can see a thought and then I can see the next one, the next one. That's just the, the heavy duty confusion wasn't here for a little while. And I'm just waiting, waiting. And, and, and then there's seems like gaps and I'm going, hold on, I bet you I'm thinking, how about a sec? Let's see what's happening here. And I and I'm and then I'm gonna look and I go. I'm thinking. I can't see what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm confused. Oh, I better watch those ones now as well. And I'm trying to see all the layers of. I'm doing this wrong. I don't know what's happening here. I'm doing this. I'm I'm confused. I'm trying to see all as many of those as I can to go. Is there really no thinking when I? It seems silent, 
I bet you there's thoughts in there. Let's see. Let's look even further and see what's, I don't know. Okay. It does sound like maybe you are adding more layers of thought to the, to the, 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 the pie. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yeah. The, the thought pie. The, the, so it's a, it's a, it's a layer cake of thought really. Um, so the, the magic to that inquiry, the magic to the, do you know what your next thought is going to be kind of inquiry is to recognize that as invested and identified as we seem to be with our thoughts, that we have absolutely no idea what our next thought is ever mm -hmm. going to be. And it's not about recognizing if there is going to be a next thought, because of course there is. And there's not, it's not about, am I thinking when I'm not thinking that I'm thinking, even though that's also kind of interesting to note, it's some magic opening happens when you are looking, what is my next thought going to be? And there's a brief moment of silence where you don't know what the hell that next thought is going to be. And there's a realization that can come with that, that, oh, it's not under my control. There is nothing there that has to do with me thinking a thought, creating thoughts, or anything else. There's just that moment of pause, that moment of silence, where there's a recognition that there is just this stopping with no idea when that stopping is going to end or how it's going to end, what it's going to be replaced with. And it's instead of making anything out of what comes next, what thoughts do show up, that's completely irrelevant to that particular exercise. It's just noticing those brief moments of silence and the fact that there is no idea how that or if that is ever going to end. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just doing that over and over again as, as needed to feel that, that sort of realization dawn that that experience of of really not being in any sort of control of whatever is spinning in the mind at the risk of taking up even more space i can't see how many hands are up now because i'm not <laughs> sure thing. um that's just yeah i don't know that's exactly the point to me in some sense i hear why i think i'm failing i hear people describing this and i first of all i hear people saying implying or saying that there's a space between thoughts and i'm like nope no, there isn't. <laughs> but continuing confusion. So I've had this. So I have the, the space between the explicit thoughts, as I said, before, and then this sense feeling or sensation of some kind of confusion or identification humming along continuously. And I'm going, oh, is there really a space between these thoughts or is there thinking happening continuously? It feels like continuous thinking. It feels like identification. I need to look further and further. And then there's a thought saying there's some unconscious thinking or something identification happening you need to look into this oh is that a thought oh i don't know and i just the whole bloody thing is confusion and i never get that gap and i kind of know what that's supposed to be about but i that's why i'm yeah and like i started i suppose i came across angelo in december 2022 i've been doing this for that length of time and that was my very first experience of this and it's always been my experience of it the, never finding a gap always finding confusion and the belief that i'm identified with this confusion and I, I still I still agree with Todd that you're doing everything right. I still agree with that. Because when you have what what you're noticing is that it it no. What you're noticing is actually something that most people never notice. And that is that every single sensory sensory experience we have have a thought attached to it. Mm -hmm. Most people don't notice that. Most people they experience what you say yeah. that that now I'm thinking. That was a quiet. Now I'm thinking again. So so most people notice that gap between the thoughts. But okay. in reality, in reality, there's never, ever quiet. Never, ever quiet. Because your sensory experiences are experiencing all the time. And there's a little thought attached to every single thing. Because that is the only thing that is ensuring our survival. Mm -hmm. That you can smell that there's no smoke. You can hear that there's not a saber-toothed tiger in the kitchen. You can, you know, notice all that. And every every single sensory experience we have have a little appendix of identification full of thought attached to it. So okay, what we're doing yeah. is actually, how can we say, next level. 
where okay. it's noticing all the thoughts that are attached to every single sensory experience. And when we start to practice noticing the sensory experiences, it is noticing what is a sensory experience and what is a thought about a sensory mm -hmm. experience. What you're experiencing right now is everything at the same time. That's the, uh, thank you. Yeah, you're very kind. I mean, I don't notice the thoughts specific, but I, when I'm here, I'm waiting for the next thought. And then this feeling of, I feel like I'm identified with every sound outside the window and everything. It's all about me. Yeah. Everything that's happening yeah, is about so And it makes me feel, ugh. Yeah, yeah. And I'm waiting for the next thought going, there's a hundred thoughts happening now. Where's the next thought? I can't see most of them. So, yeah. And, and notice too, though, like I know you said that they're all self-referential, but notice, you know, if you hear a bird outside the window, are you seeing a quick image in your mind of a bird? Is it is it things where our our internal world is constantly being created by, as mm. Pranilla just said, these these images and 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 stories and memories and all of these flashes that are popping up in response to everything constantly. Mm. Ding, 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 ding. And so even when we think we're having a raw experience of like sensation, you can notice, am I having visual images that mm. seem to be correlating to that sensation? Is it images of the it sensation that I'm so feeling? Is quick. It... it goes so quick. Yeah. For example, I heard a bird and before I even noticed that I heard a bird, my mind created a picture of a cardinal. And then it was a picture of us in the hammock yesterday yeah. looking at the cardinal. So it, and it goes out like that. So, so mm. quick. So, so you're actually a step ahead of of what we would like for you to notice. You're doing better than than you thought. Yeah, that's so <laughs> terrible. I was I was determined to believe I'm a failure for way longer than this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry to burst that bubble. Yeah, damn. Yeah. Oh, Thank thanks it. for all your time. I appreciate it. I'll keep working on it. Thank Good. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. <Thanks. laughs> You got a long app. I do have. Oh, oh, oh no! Up in the it, corner. It's a no, up in the corner. Okay, yeah. there we go. Oh no, it's a mag. <laughs> Remove pin this up. Thank you. No. Yeah, I have a long arm, but really short eyes. <laughs> there. There we go. Hello. How are you? Hey. Who did you call on? Oh, Jared. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. We oh, me. Okay, I didn't hear you. Oh, no, so we didn't. We just said hello because we knew, like, <laughs> telepathically, you would know that you <laughs> and just. Knew you I wasn't sure if I was next in line. Yeah. Okay. And I'm so sorry. I think I really need a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back. Quick, really quick. Yeah, you you know how fast I can move. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll just say while you go, I'll just say to Don, beautiful, and um, also Don, like when you say like I'll keep working on it, just also remember that like there's no place to get to yes. it's like sometimes when we feel like oh i'm gonna work on it so i can get to this destination it's yeah. kind of like what she said in the beginning where like oh you're already at the destination so you can be curious you can like say i'll be keep i'm gonna keep being curious about it i'm gonna keep looking at it you know but like i feel like when you say like I'm going to keep working on it. It's like, oh, I got to get somewhere. You know what I mean? Sometimes just saying it like that, it just, I like to remind myself when I, when I feel like the ina inadequacy of this moment, like Pernil was saying, like when I see myself noticing the inadequacy of this moment, that like, um, oh, it isn't inadequate. This isn't inadequate, actually. So I, I don't need to work on it, but I can still like, be curious about it and still be, hmm, and look at it, you know? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're very kind. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Um, thank, thank you so much, Dara. That was really good. Yeah, and I think that, like, it's because I, I had a moment where I, um, when I saw the other day something happening where I could see the thoughts saying something about, about, about me, you know, like something happened where like, I felt inadequate and I felt like, God, I'm, s why did I do that? You know, like, and even though I had the glimpse and I could see through Fredder one, 
I, I, I could automatically see that, oh, those thoughts are saying that, but there's still something here that needs to be felt through. Because mm-hmm. I can go around in circles and just and just remember that, oh, that's just a story. I don't need to believe that thought. But I'm noticing more that I am bypassing the 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 sensation part of like oh what what is it where you know where is it it's in my chest and it feels tight and you know so my point of that was that um even though even though i know it's all a story and i can notice that it's a story sometimes i still get caught in the story because I think uh, I think it's because the the emotion is of inadequacy is still there like that wound is still there somewhere. And and it feels like yeah like like you said in the beginning Perno like those are just thoughts they're just thoughts but really it's like those just thoughts are so there's so much meaning seeped into those thoughts there's so much like this is what it means. This is what, this is how I've navigated my life since I was a baby. Like, this is how I figured out how to, how to be a a human in this world by putting meaning on things. And, and, you know, so, so when you say like, even I, I kind of get the, I kind of get the sense when you, with the six fetter stuff, we're like, oh, I'm putting meaning on that. That's a tree. Like, that's the meaning that I'm, of course, that's a tree. That's what I learned. That's what it's named. And I know the, all of the, you know, the function of the tree. And I know the, what kind of tree it is, the color of the leaves on it. Anyways, so even that is a meaning that I'm placing on it. Um, so just like the, th- the thoughts, they're, they're, they have, they come with so much meaning. But that that is why we put so much emphasis in the second fetter about fear, anger, guilt, and shame. Because you cannot rock that boat until the boat that you're sitting and talking about, until you completely have your back. And even yeah. in a position to say, I know that is a tree, and then question how do you know this is a tree well i know because it looks like a tree yes but how do you know it's a tree if you do not draw on experience if you not draw on anything that you have ever been taught how do you know that is a tree and we know by history we are taught lots of things that are not right we are taught that we are like don has been taught that he's in the way and he's, he's always wrong we've been taught that we are shameful for being this and that we are taught that we are right because we are and the others they are the wrong ones we've been taught so many things that are absolutely not true and we work with the second feather so we can release all of those beliefs because none of them are true none of them are true the only thing that we know for absolute certainty is that we do not know anything. Whatever we believe we know is just a belief. And we need to okay. let go of all of that, even so, the certainty that this is a tree. Yes. Okay. Like I need to feel safe enough here first to be to get lost in the mystery of that fucking yes. Yes. like not knowing even that. Okay, I get that. Yes. So I need to so so then Like I texted you the other day because something happened with my husband where like, and now it's like, I can't even remember really, but I think it has, it still has, it's still this thing where like when I was, when um, I, I was noticing that I, I'm afraid to ask for what I want because when I, sometimes when I ask for what I want, he, I, I'm perceiving that he's looking at me like, are you fucking stupid? Or like, what like in disgust like he's disgusted by my request like i'm afraid to ask him something because i perceive his response as you're fucking disgusting for asking me like you're so annoying 
you're so stupid. How could you even ask me? And I, so when I'm when I'm staying with the sensation of what's happening, because I, I do have to walk away from him to stay with that sensation and to look at like, oh, where is it? You know, the 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 feeling it's the uh, it feels tight. Oh, my throat, my throat. And then it's like it's also the image of his face mm. looking at me like. Like, you know, like like so annoyed by me you know <laughs> so there's it's almost like i my, my my i know the thoughts but like my body still is believing that my body the body is still in a like that's yes. what yes yes the 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 end goal i want to start the other at the other end the end goal is to be in a life where you set everyone free to look how they look, to say what they say, and they are absolutely free. He's even allowed to say with words, you're fucking disgusting. How stupid yeah. are you? He's even allowed to do that. And you're setting yes. free. If you want to be with people that do that, that's a completely different business, not what we are talking about. I'm just saying that in a bracket for anybody that hears this recording afterwards. So, so the the end goal, if we can have a goal, but understand what I mean, is to be in a life where we set everyone free to be who they are, and right. we set ourselves free to have every single reaction that we do. So, okay, when you have, when you have a contraction in the chest, going like, oh, I can hardly breathe, then there's an an adult Jahira standing right behind you, going like, breathe, my love, it's fine, I got your back. You're seven years old. It's just an old memory. Breathe. I'm right here with you. No matter what other people say about you, you're wonderful. You're gorgeous. Everything is fine. You. It's about healing yourself into being the adult in the room. So you're not seven years old and you're not reacting based on whatever trauma happened when you were a kid, but you're acting like an adult. And not just like we talked with Phoebe about, as an adult, we have clear boundaries. You can somebody can say you're fucking disgusting. You can go like, okay, I do not prefer you talking to me like that. I would yeah, like yeah. speak with, with to me with respect. But that can only happen when you are absolutely certain that that is what is said. Because we have experienced multiple times that people they hear something, they have a reaction to what we have talked about. And they write to us and going like, when you said that, it really, really hurt me. And we look at one another going like, what? Then they listen to the recording afterwards and get back to us going like, oh, you didn't say that. I thought you said that. Because yes. and most times we're in our own little bubble and we do not hear what is said. We hear what we expect that they are said. Yeah. That was a lot of things in one sentence. Yeah. And, it, and, but it's only with my husband, like there is no fear of rejection or cause it's only with him that I, and, and I, I know that it's still my, it's still my bubble. I, yes. I, I, I know it's, I, I'm, I'm not in any way trying to change him, but I think that was part of my question when I texted you the other day, because it's like, but still like, how does that work in partnership? And it's like, well, there is no partnership. Like it's here and once I can like be my own little, my own parent, then I can clearly, if it needs to be said, I can clearly say to him like, wow, like the way you, the way you said that just now, something happened instead of it being like, oh, you know, like. Yeah, taking, taking, it, taking it inward as if there's something wrong with you. Yeah, yeah, right. He's allowed to have a face. Yes. <laughs> And and he's allowed to roll his eyes and he's allowed to do all that. He can do all he wants. Totally. I don't need to. He can be yeah. a jerk. And, and I got it. All, absolutely fine. I got it. Your job is to know your boundaries. How much, how much is okay with you? Right. But when I'm in it and I'm, I am that, that shameful little girl. When you're seven, then I don't, I don't know. No, when you're seven yeah. years old, you it's not a job for a seven year old to deal yeah. with. And that, that therefore you're doing the right thing, but withdrawing. Yeah. 
getting in contact with the adult Jahara, 2024 Jahara, that can say, okay, sweetheart, I'm right here. I felt yeah, okay. hurt you were. Just breathe. Everything is fine. You're fine. Yeah. So, so give that part of you reassurance. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just loved what Phoebe said in the beginning because, and it made me cry because I think that uh, I remember having that experience like her where one, one day I woke up and I, I was just being moved to do things and I wasn't choosing it. And I was like, oh, this is next. Oh, I was just like going along with the whatever the body was doing. Like there was no like, oh, I got to do this next or I got to make sure I do this. It was just like, it was such a beautiful, like, it's such a, um, yes, it was just such a relief and like so peaceful that sometimes I do have that like, oh, I want that back, you know, like <laughs> that was so beautiful. Like when she was explaining it, I was crying because I remember like, oh yes, the simplicity, it was so simple. Like, and even like, um, like when, and then, then when she said that the guy said something to her and then she had this moment, like when I, when I first had the glimpse, it was like, it, it's like, it's like when you, when you, when you're in that place, it's like, you can, you, you can just say to him, like, you can just say to him, oh, like, yeah, please don't call me gorgeous. But, but for some reason it feels like for Phoebe, it's like, but no, I can't say that to him, you know, like, oh God, no. And, and no, he shouldn't be saying that to me. He, sh that is inappropriate. And he, and I, what I can't tell him that, but you know, like there's still like some but beliefs in there. Right. Yeah, and it, it is about getting back to that nine feather flow where we are just moving with with whatever is alive and we're not seven feather creating something out of nothing. We're just moving with with what is. And if your husband says something that really, really makes you hurt, you, you can say, that really hurt me when you said that. You can say that without any any demand for him to not say it or apologize or anything. You can just be honest in that moment and go like, "That really hurt me." Yeah, I don't. I can't, but I can't do that because that feels also like bypassing. Because then he's gonna come and say, "I'm so sorry. Like I shouldn't have done that." It's gonna try to make me feel better instead of me like processing but yeah. that. Did you have that as a child? Did you have that it was possible for you to say that really hurt me? And an adult came over and put their arms around you and kissed you and said, it's fine. I love you. I'm so sorry that I hurt you. Did you ever have that? Because if you didn't, then it's about time. And it's okay if he gives it to me, you mean? If, I mean Instead of me not? If he says something that that hurts you and you say that really hurt me, then he goes like, I'm I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you at all, and comes and and give you a hug and say and apologize for what he said because he didn't mean to hurt you. That is that is normal exchange. If I say something and I hurt you, and you come to me and say you really hurt me when you said that, we actually had that you and I in the beginning. Remember where I said that no matter what you do with your children, they will end up in therapy. Remember? Yep, yep. But and you thought you hurt me, but you didn't. No, yeah. You said you you said I'm sorry if I seemed da 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 da, da, da and I was like not at all like no, exactly exactly so 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 that is the that is the relationship if you have a relationship where you can tell me that really hurt me or I can say to you I'm sorry if I hurt you that is an open adult relationship where you can say no no that was fine and I'm going like okay that's good that is an open open adult relationship where where yeah. I make sure that you're fine and I'm not doing anything to hurt you and you making sure that that you're fine and not doing anything to hurt me that is an adult relationship we don't have that maturity as children so if we haven't if we haven't as children experienced that we were sad something was said and we really got hurt and we could go to an adult that could be the parental guidance and could take us up on our lap on their lap and kiss us and reassure us, then we need to experience that as an adult. And sometimes 
that can be received by another person. You can receive that by another person. I'm experiencing that all the time with Todd. You do that together? Yeah, all the time. Okay, because I'm, I mean, maybe I'm trying to translate it as, oh, you must not even ever say anything to him because you're like, you know, it's your bubble. So why would you say something to him? It is my bubble, but I still might need a hug. <laughs> We're still very openly. Um... It's, it's, it's even though that he has not done anything, I might still need a hug. I might still need, you know, reassurance and him kissing me and saying everything is fine, even though he hasn't done anything. I might need that. And of course I can give it to myself. I've done that my entire life. Now I have an add-on. Doesn't have to. It's a... Yeah, it's hard for me because then I'm thinking that to Todd will say, but that's your shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> deal with your shit. But that's what I that's what my, I think what my question was in partnership with, with this. Because it's like, he's still your partner, even though he's you're in your own bubble. It's a supporting, loving partnership. It's it's where it's not like you got your own shit. Deal with it, woman. It's it's like <laughs> we're, we're, I feel like that's how I sh I am. That's the thing is we're in it together. It's like it's like a joint partnership where I have my shit, she has her shit, and we work on it together. We help each other. So and, if and, someone and, comes and, up and, my, and I feel something, she's yeah. there and giving a supportive, safe space. And if I need a hug, I get a hug. If she needs a hug, she gets a hug. Like it's it doesn't have to be. This. It's, it's not it's not me sorting out my shit in solitude yeah. without Todd and then by the way we're married <laughs> it's, yeah that's how I was trying to do it yeah oh. it's me it's me sorting out my shit knowing that it's my shit but I have my best friend with me to talk to that I can uh. say okay, this this is coming up in me right now he can hold space for me listen to me come with different angles and it help me do inquiries about it and if I need a hug I get a hug yeah, but he's awake though. My husband's not. So now instead of when I say like that hurt me, he's going to try to convince me. You can you can say why you you can say when you did that with your face, that really really hurt me. Could you just give me a hug? You don't have to say anything. You don't need to reassure me everything is fine. I know, just give me a hug. Okay. You can, you don't have to. Yeah, no, it is safe to do that with him. He's not awake, but he's conscious, you know. That's good. Okay. So, you, so you can if if he's on board with that, you can even tell him that I'm working with this seven year old shit yeah. I'm dealing with, and whenever you say anything, I'm projecting my dad onto you. You don't need to to do anything but just be you, because by being you, I know you're not my dad. I know I'm not seven years old. I know that we are two adults and you're just holding space for me. If he's, you know, conscious, then he would hold space for you. it's that dad thing yeah yeah and just because you were a little trooper when you were seven years old and you sorted out everything on your own it does not mean that you have to do that still if you are in a loving relationship where your husband have your back, then you can lean on him. 
You do not need to be alone. It is your shit to sort out. It's not for him to sort out for you. But he can hold space and he can give you a hug and he can give you a reassurance as an adult in 2024. Okay. Thank you. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> May I ask you what happened? No, there's still like a tightness in my throat, but um what happened? You mean like what do you yeah. mean? Yeah. Um like what happened just when? Just now. No, when you said are you okay? It was just like there's still some tightness in my <laughs> <laughs> yeah lungs are, is sadness yeah it's okay there's still like i yeah it's coming the i can i notice the where the sensations are in my body yeah and i'm okay You're such a little trooper. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's really good to, to just, you know, yeah. Boy, oh boy, I got a feeling it's going to explode at the retreat, bro. It's going to come through something. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. We're here. Because yeah. even just with the talking, that what you have, it comes up. So I can imagine like the actual embodiment exercises it's going to be. Yeah. Oh. It's be really good. Really, really good. Okay, thank you. You're very quick with getting us out of the way. I just, I don't want to take up any more time. It's a theme of the day, it isn't really, it? It really is. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> contagious. I just, I just love the other people here and I want them to talk to, you know. So I just feel like, okay, I'm going to go, I'm going to mute myself and sit in the process. <laughs> While you're processing, I just want to, I had one other quick little pointer that I just wanted to give that something that you said earlier when you were saying about Phoebe, um, you know, kind of being jealous or, or remembering what it was like to just be kind of moving without the feeling of being, mm. you know, of moving. Of, yeah. Of I was just going to say, just a quick little inquiry thing. While you are going about your day, if you feel like you are doing something where you don't have that kind of flow, you don't have that feeling of just um, things are just happening, notice what is actually happening in that moment. Are you feeling contractions in the body that are some sort of resistance to doing what you're doing? Are there thoughts that are coming up about now I have to do this and now I have to do that and there's a reason for it? Just be aware of what is getting in the way between having where you are and that experience that mm -hmm. you were talking about. Because the only things that are there are some sort of thought about how things should be done a certain way or should be done differently. Felt and a a felt, different yeah, and a felt resistance in the body to something that's happening in this mm -hmm. moment. So just being aware of that and see if you can like, you know, address them as we've been doing. Yeah, I do notice. I do notice that. Like, I, I because I'm a stay at home mom, it's like, I'm not allowed to just sit down sometimes, you know, like, I notice that, like, oh, I should be doing this. And I need to do this. Like, uh, you know, I, like, in, it's like my worth is dependent on yeah. what I how, you know, my role, I need to fulfill this role as a stay at home mom and wife, like, I'm, I'm, I want to be a good wife. And, a, you know, mostly, a good wife like I I you know my husband works and I stay home so like I gotta make dinner and I gotta make sure it's okay and like I, I do notice that like wow like I don't even let myself just sit down like sometimes I just want to sit down and like yeah. just feel the sensations you know like I'm 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 pulled to just sit down and like sit and yeah. quietly and but like it's like I notice the thoughts that say no 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 there's no time for that and, and, and even when I do sit down I'm like no, no, no. There's the, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, but but also the funny part is, what is it that makes you believe 
that you not sitting down and breathing makes you into mm -hmm. a better wife. You're a better wife if you're not sitting down and breathing. It's I mean, true. that makes no sense whatsoever. You are much better yeah. when you are present in the moment. When you're right. not, you know, hanging your worth up on dinner being ready at the right time. That is has nothing to do with your worth. That's about dinner. And dinner can only be ready at the time dinner is ready at. And even within the little, the little smaller micro events of making dinner and all of that, notice every step along the way yeah. where the resistance is, where the thoughts are coming up saying it needs to be done at a certain time and I should be doing it differently. And I should and actually be also doing also laundry. Doing, I should really be. But, but also doing dinner in a certain way. Yeah. What, how, why is it that you cannot make dinner fully present and aware in that open space that Phoebe was talking about? Of course you are. Yeah, not. yeah. So. Yeah. And it, I, I noticed lately, like, it's like a, I, I, I it's, I, I'm not suffering the way I used to, but the thoughts still, mm. not to the extent where it's making me suffer, but it, to the extent where I'm still believing them, you know, and being, you know, they're, they're like, I, I'm, I'm believing that what they're saying is true and that I have to do it like this. But also, also that you're, you're back into how it used to be with, with you, Jahara being better when she's really pulling herself together and actually not being Jahara, then she's so much better. Remember yeah. the we had five thousand years ago regarding your dad and and pulling yourself together and not being authentically you. If there's there's a hint of that again, you know there's a hint of that instead of you knowing that the more you are present in the moment the more true you are to you and the better you are as a mom, as a wife, as a human being, as a neighbor, as a American, as you know, everything. You're so, such a better version of you when you're present in the moment and there's not all the hooks in you being something else than what you actually are. Yeah, and that, I, that but that requires slowing down enough. Yes, yes. And very often we can slow down without being late with dinner and late with the things that, because it's it's just the thoughts that are changing. Instead of having the thought 10 minutes ahead of yourself, you have your thoughts here. It's the only difference. Okay. Yeah, I'll keep noticing that. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Love you so much. Yeah. You're Love so you too. Loved. So loved. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to the retreat. Yeah, me too. All right, sis. So, um, uh, okay, I can wait if we need to close. For what? No, we could. We could. We got time oh. for you. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um. Okay. So. Um well a simple th thing that i want to start with is the with the sixth better um so i can sit in one of the practices and see everything around me as um kind of vibrating moving wiggling um blurry boundaries that sort of thing or um, on occasion, a kind of flat screen doesn't last very long, that sort of thing. But, um, and notice, I certainly can notice the identifications, the mind creating the objects. Um, but when I, but there's a, the change is twofold. First of all, that it doesn't really feel like anyone's looking most of the time. But secondly, when there is some sense of subject-object, it's not the same. It's like, so I can look at the plants hanging on my patio 
and recognize that my mind calls them plants, but my being knows them as 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 presence, as just these beautiful presences, you know, like actually senses presence. Or if I walk into my into my bedroom, it's as though there's that everything in my room is present with that that there's a, a how do I say this? So it's like my hands tingle. It's like I can touch it all without touching it, you know? I mean, it's like And the thing is there's no meaning to that. You know, it's not it's not It's just this kind of, not kind of, because it's not kind of, it's just, um, okay, I, I'm going to sit that there for now, because there's also, like, there's no, there's no will to do anything. And um, and no sense of meaning that, that so there's all, there's this, you know, I've heard of people being nihilistic and nihilism and have never felt that before. And I have felt that now a few times. And it's like the opposite of what I was just describing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and, and it's not like meaning is the opposite of nihilism. I mean, I'm not a philosopher, so I, I'm not sure how it, that this isn't, I, I, I just feel like there's an awful lot happening here and absolutely nothing happening. And, um, Actually, I haven't, I, I, I've been noticing all this. I haven't been, feel, like, I, I feel quite a bit as I'm talking, which I haven't been experiencing. I mean, I'm feeling an awful lot of heat. It's like a really strong heat flush. And, um... Uh, some tremble, slight trembling in my jaw. But these, this like paradox, this huge paradox of everything is so precious and it's not, it, it, it doesn't even mean anything. I mean, how, it seems like such a huge, paradox and having no like personal will but all of this willingness and I I don't I don't I'm not sure 
I'm not even sure why I'm talking, <laughs> what I'm asking, or so, so. I guess I'm... I don't understand the question. You can ask yeah. Can can I can I start off just by saying I think the only reason that there's a paradox here is because both of them are thoughts. The idea that there is meaning here and it's a beautiful, connected, amazing, loving world full of presence is a concept. It can be an experience, yeah. but the conclusion that's drawn from that experience is a concept, is a thought, it's a belief. Yeah, so okay. So so let's slow down. Let's slow down. So because I've been catching that that kind of thing and yeah that I, I mean what Pernilla says just comes to me constantly that the only You know, like for me, it's that the only feeling is just okayness. Like everything's okay. Yeah. Contentment. Can can you hear me? By the way, I saw Jahara just said that my voice is low. Can you? Can yeah. You um. Yeah, I can hear you. And that anything other than that is a thought. Yeah. And meaninglessness. Nihilism is a thought. They're, they're both equal, yeah. equal partners. That that the world is filled with meaning and God's love and connection and all of that is just as much of a thought as there is nothing, there's no meaning, there's no, God. It's, it's, there's no God, it's empty, all of that. They're equal thoughts. They're just on opposite sides of the spectrum. You know, and actually, I I really have seen that. I really am seeing that and and there's a there, there's a resistance that's coming up to all to the absolute clarity of that some that I I don't know I mean, it just is. Hmm. Do, do you, and um, so I'm... Yeah, that's good. Do, do you need to create a place to stand? Do you need to create a concept about what it means for there to be a sense of security or comfort around it? Or, or what it doesn't mean? Or what it doesn't mean, yeah. Um. Sometimes it feels like that, and sometimes no. Um, very strange. It's just very, very strange. It's that it, well. It's that middle ground of, that we're looking for, but it's it's very easy to want to get launched into one side or the other, and to constantly be creating some sort of meaning or conceptualization of everything that we experience because it's it's comforting in some ways. We we feel like we we have some ground to stand on. We know you know how to define things and how to use things and where to put ourselves even if we don't really feel like ourselves anymore there's still some sort of perspective in there that okay everything is connected and it's all beautiful and there's implicit in that this kind of i'm part of all of that and so mm -hmm. i'm okay because i'm part of absolutely everything and yeah see i can't do that i i, I can't do that anymore 
Good. But then if you're flipping into good. Nine, <laughs> well, I don't know. I, it's not, it doesn't. But, but you, the problem is if you're flipping into the nihilistic side of things where nothing is meaningless, I feel cold and empty. And then there's that feeling of identification with that in some way, even if it's not as explicit as, you know, first fetter self or any of that, it's that it still feels like now there's no meaning here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing to grasp onto. And I feel like now there's no meaning to me. Now there's no meaning to, you know, I'm still connected to everything, but in a way where there's no meaning behind anything all of a sudden. And so both of those are still extremes. Yes, and they're still thoughts. And they're yeah. still I, I, I mean, and I can recognize that these are still thoughts and I can, If you are absolutely still with no concept about a universe, about other things, about you, about separation or individuality or um, complete connection, without any of those thoughts, what is the problem? Where is the issue? Is there anything wrong if there's no conceptualization about something being a certain way? Can anything be wrong? No, nothing can be wrong. Mm -hmm. Nothing can be wrong. Nothing can be wrong. At this stage, it's important to be vigilant with the pull from one side to the other, that pull to make meaning out of something, and instead see if you can just rest with things exactly as they are in the most pure and raw experience that's there. No pushing away of anything and no clinging to anything for any sort of feeling of security or meaning or or um you know i i really am there more than i'm presenting hmm. somehow it seemed Yeah, I guess there really isn't anything else to say. It's just... Yeah, I, I can't even find... I, I, I can't find... I mean, the quiet, yeah. Yeah, there, there is, I don't, I mean, it's so perfectly okay. I don't, the resistance is such a mystery. I, Just I when it's there, you know, when it's not there, it's not a problem. So yeah. when, when it is there, just feel into what's happening. Feel into if there's an emotional undercurrent behind it, this resistance, this, this, is it because there is a sense of, fear is there a sense of other emotion that's that's undercutting it that's keeping it so that you feel locked in to needing to create something where there isn't any 
needing to create a meaning, needing to create a story, needing to create a belief, any of that, if that feeling starts to come in, just be curious about it. And what is it right now that I'm trying to compensate for or distract from by creating a sense of meaning or belief or story here? And then you can follow those breadcrumbs. And then otherwise, when those aren't there, again, there's no problem. The problem only arises with thoughts creating an idea of what might be. But we have no way of accessing this ultimate truth that tries to, in, tries to convince us that what we're experiencing is objectively true in some sort of absolute sense outside of our experience and so it's just coming down to do i need this experience to have meaning for me do i need this to mean something and if so it's not because it needs to mean something for the rest of humanity or the universe at large it needs to have a meaning because i feel uncomfortable without it it needs to have a meaning because i have that need right now so what is that need for me in this moment to recognize that I feel connected to the world or that I feel like I'm not alone or that I feel like my life isn't meaningless or purposeless? Just being really honest with what that is actually doing for you to have that belief and then feel if both sides of those were dropped, is there really a problem? Is there anything there at that point when you're not creating a storyline about a life, about a universe, and about the way things are or should be or could be? Mm -hmm. Without any of that, is there really any issue? Feel free to write me and let me know how this is going. It's very, very, very difficult for me to write. I can talk, but it's always been hugely difficult. I don't know if that's something, I mean, I've explored it and explored it, and I get nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I can, I can talk, but when I try to write, I can't, nothing, it just gets really kind of jumbled and, um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the quiet, the contentment, makes the thoughts seem so like dust like yeah. so like frivolous almost mm -hmm. and yet they it's still there and it's okay for the thoughts to be there, but if they still seem to be catching you, if they still seem to be relevant in some way, then instead of just bypassing them, then look into why is it that this is relevant for me still? What hasn't been explored? What emotional hooks might be underneath it that need to be oh. before that can go? Thank you. I think that's that's my question. Like, I can't... I can't really find a reason to explore them and I wonder about that I mean because I can't <laughs> as soon as I recognize them as thoughts
there is a body thing going on though. And I don't, I'm very much looking forward to the retreat. Yeah. I feel like there's maybe a really good thorough house cleaning somehow that needs to happen, yeah. you know, that. Um, but also yeah. becoming more aware of what is, what it actually is that is going on, because it's clear that you have, you have a, a, a quite extensive mental life, the way that you that you sit and look up into your mind all the time when you're looking for 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 how to formulate a question or how to experience how to explain your experience you have a, a a huge mental life and having that connected with the body so it's more like a a physical experience of what is happening that makes it much more easy for you because right now it's like there's a detachment between the two and that that makes it just like Don. He was struggling, you know, with with the thoughts being being real when you can't even formulate the thoughts or the experience what is happening. Then the, it's like there's nothing to hold on to. There's nowhere to go. It's just a dissonance happening, and you can't even formulate what it is. So I think a, an embodiment where where you where you connect the two is going to be so helpful for you. Just having daily exercises that you do to kind of like get into the body and feel the body and have a way to express thoughts physically with movement or with shaking or with, you know, what all the things that we're doing. I really think that is going to be amazing for you. And that's what my intuition has been telling me. It's like I've been waiting for the retreat, for the retreat that because when I do sit, I can, I can like feel mm. the energy yeah. down my body. And sometimes at night I do get up and just move. Yeah. And then also I feel, I feel my energy leaving mm. and, and the body. Yeah. Like pulling for it. Mm. Um, that's very helpful. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. We can we can go into more of this in your session when you when I see. Okay, you. and I I will. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I, I just want to say on a on a practical note um, about the retreat yes. that that people should write you what was the Discord thing? Yeah. <laughs> What was that? What was that? Hello. Um, what was that? No, well, I, I sent out an email actually to, I, I had a number of people who still hadn't, um, who had paid for the retreat already, but hadn't signed up for Discord. Um, and so I sent out an email to them because I need, uh, I need the display names uh, for anybody. Once you have, once you have paid, I need your display name on Discord to give you access to all of the retreat channels on there. Um, Cause it's, uh, yeah, it, it it's a private thing, and I have to go through it and actually uh, give yeah. permission specifically yeah. person by person. So, um, the, I'm trying to get it, you know, everybody in as quickly as possible, so that we know everybody is set up before the retreat, and we don't have any issues yeah. with it. Um, and it's also difficult for us to guess that Kit Kat Forty Seven is Janice. That's the thing. Yeah. So, um, in some cases, like I'm able to tell who somebody is, but in a lot of the cases, uh, I have to ask. So. <laughs> um yeah so so that was it that was it right yeah. yeah um next week is tuesday that we meet for the inquiry group um yeah 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 and that's well, it so yeah um remember the meditation coming up tomorrow i'm gonna link it on 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 the awakening curriculum so you get it there that is connected with what we did the inquiry we did this morning or when we started and i think that's it Thanks, have, have a great weekend. Yeah. Take care. Thank Good you. Seeing you. Bye. 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 -bye.